Okay, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to warp um, an embroidery hoop for a circle weaving. Um, I like using the embroidery hoop because it's a little bit easier than using like a metal hoop, something like, something like this, um, because when you warp a metal hoop, um, your string slides around on you a little bit. Um, so I would definitely say for beginners, to use an embroidery hoop. Um, so if you just get an embroidery hoop from the store like this, um, it will have this outer uh, ring of wood. So if you want to, you can just go ahead and loosen this and th then take that off. Um, and then we'll bring it back in later. So I'm just gonna set it to the side. And then we're gonna use some warp thread here and i'm going to go ahead and just take you know a little bit off um but i'm not going to cut it free from my cone of warp yet so what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and tie it to one end and i'll just do a double knot here i'm going to leave a little length maybe at least an inch or two there. Um, and then I like to have it so that my string is coming from the underside. So see it's coming from underneath there instead of over like that. So I'm gonna turn this over and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start warping the hoop. So the way that I do this is every time you are going around the side of the hoop, you need to be going from front to back. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I still have it on the cone here, my string's still attached. So what I'm gonna do, since if I was just coming across here, I would have to go under with how my string is laying right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take my cone and put it through my hoop. And then I'm gonna go over the top here. And then I want you to think of this almost like a clock. So if you were looking at your hoop, and this is 12, and this was six, right? As we go around to warp our hoop, think about it as if you're gonna be going to the right corner. So like if you were gonna to go to one, and then you'll come back across and go to seven and then you are gonna to go to two, and then you'll come back and cross and go to eight. And then if you were gonna to go to three, and then you'll come back and cross and go to nine. We're gonna be doing a lot more um, kind of ticks <laughs> in our clock than just 12, um, but that's kind of a nice way to think about it when you're going, you're basically starting out by going to the right top and then the left bottom, and you'll slowly go around your circle. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. So I've gone around the bottom here. I've gone in front and then around it. So then I'm back behind my hoop. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and go around the top here. And I'm gonna go um, about half an inch or so over. And then I'm gonna go around it. Again, I'm gonna bring my cone through and then I'm gonna bring it over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and come around the front again, again about an inch here. So at least the same distance as what I did over here. And then I'm gonna come around again to my next tick here. I'll hold it in place. I'll bring my cone through and then I'm going to bring my cone through in front here and I'm going to go to the side here and I'm going to continue to do this as I go around and I'm going to give myself a little bit more string here. So I'm basically going to continue using my cone until I can no longer put it through my hoop. 
And for this project, I'm using a 10 inch hoop, but you can do it on any size embroidery hoop you like. And it's gonna look, you can see it looks a little crazy in the middle now. Um, but, oop, try not to drop it. But we'll clean that up once we get all the way around. So again, I'm just going in front, then behind, then I'm coming to the next one to go in front. I'm bringing my cone through, bringing my cone through again. And you'll be able to tell when you need to bring your cone through because you just wanna get the string back to the front of your hoop. So I like to bring them, bring it through for both sides at the same time. Okay, so you can kind of see, this isn't exactly, <laughs> if you look at it, see how this section here is a lot smaller than the section here. So I haven't exactly been keeping up uh, perfectly proportional how much I'm doing here and how much I'm doing here. That's okay. So I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of like start to slide these a little bit to keep the same amount of space here along the top. So I'll slide this, slide this. And once I do that, it looks a little bit more even, you see. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to do this. And that's why also sliding it through like that, why you don't wanna make it too tight when you're going around. So I'm not really like pulling to make it tighter when I pull these through. Oh, forgot to bring my cone through. I'm not like taking it and pulling it more. I'm just kind of wrapping it around. And again, I'm kind of running out of space here faster than here. So I'm actually gonna take these. So this is my top. So now this is the stuff on the left side. And I'm gonna start pulling these a little bit more too. And the reason that I'm doing that more than anything is because I want my middle to be as dead center as I can get it. I don't want it to drift up towards here, right? So I'm gonna just move these and it will be a little bit more centered. Yeah, so now it's a lot more centered than it was. Um, and you can still, even if you're kind of having a hard time find, figuring out where the center is for your circle, you can always tell by how much, how big of a pie piece it is in comparison to this one. And if they're way off, then this is not going to be centered at all. Okay, so I'm getting close here and I'm getting almost to the point where I can't pull my cone through again. And say you're not using a cone and warp, you could also do this with a skein of yarn and keep pulling the skein of yarn through as well, as far as you can go. Okay, so I'm about at that point, I can't pull my cone through anymore. And I probably need to go like three more prongs on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a couple arm lengths worth of string here. that out of the way okay so you can kind of see got a good bit I usually give myself way too much just in case and then I'm gonna go ahead and just keep pulling these through to finish this off okay And 
and you could see I kind of have like a big section left there so I'm actually going to kind of pull that to the side and even that out a little bit here okay so I've gone all the way around the middle looks a mess right you're like how is this even going <laughs> to turn into something that I can weave on okay so here's what we're going to do so I'm holding my string up here I've still got all this loose string over here to work with so I'm going to go ahead and I want to point out a couple things. So this is all a jumbly mess. And then if you look at this one right here, this is the one that you started with. And it is the only one that just still has one string here because you've only have that first piece that you started with. You haven't gone around it at all. So everywhere else has two strings, right? As I'm pointing to these other ones. And this one only has one. Okay. So we still need to complete that one so that it has two strings like all the other ones. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna clean up our middle and the way that we do that is for our last one, we're gonna come around and I'm just bringing it through the middle here. So I just kind of picked a quadrant like closest to my first string and I brought my string through there and then watch what happens as I tighten it. So as I tighten it, look, it gets a lot cleaner, right? And I've still, I've just got a couple of these guys just kind of out of place. Okay, great. So now I'm just gonna kind of go through a couple more quadrants until everything falls into place a little bit more. So I just went back through where I came from and went around the center of it again. And now I'm gonna go around the center one more time. Okay, so I basically just looped it around the middle a couple times and that caused everything to tighten and to pull closer. So now I've got a much more weavable circle loom. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish off this one where I started. So I'm gonna bring it so I can make sure it's coming from the front. Like remember all the other ones we were always wrapping around from the front first. And I'm gonna see if I can get this a little closer so you can see better. So now remember how we kept that string a little bit longer. I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap it around the edge once. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and take these and I'm gonna just double knot them together. Just like that. And then now I can go ahead and take it and I can cut it shorter. And there we go. We've got something that we can weave on now. So that is how you would weave an embroidery hoop. And then once you've got that all warped up, or that's how you warp an embroidery hoop so that you can weave onto it. And then once you've got it all warped up, um, what's really great about using an embroidery hoop is that you can bring your outer piece back again and put it back on and then tighten it up again. And then that means that while you actually weave on it, these strings aren't going anywhere. They're not moving at all, which is great. This is exactly what we want. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.